Good afternoon, uh, very glad and uh, praise the Lord for having this chance again on another Sunday to share God's word with you. Uh, today actually we're going to pretty much continue on the same uh, thought we started last week. Uh, if you remember last week we talked about recognizing God uh, as our creator. Uh, we looked at Psalm 139 and uh, the intimacy that is found between the Creator, God, and His creation being you and me as a human. And we, uh, in summary, we don't want to repeat everything we shared, but in summary, uh, we saw that uh, we're purposefully made. We're, we're, not, we're not here by accident, uh, by the will of man, it's God. Uh, and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, so God uh, had a uh, uh, sort of thought uh, in his mind toward uh, creating us and uh, making us the way we are. Today we're going to continue on that same thought, but from a different angle. Uh, now, uh, looking at God as a creator should not be uh, really a, a, a strange or, or, or really a surprise thought for us, because if we look at the Bible, uh, the first few verses in it introduce God to us as a creator. Uh, Genesis 1.1 1, 1, it says those words, and in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So God chose to introduce himself as a creator uh, to us. And uh, if, as we move to the Bible, to the book of Revelation even, the last few chapters it talks about God saying, uh, Behold, I'm making everything new. Uh, I'm creating everything new. So uh, he's, he's not only a creator, but he's, uh, uh, he's really... Uh, committed to the act of creation. Now, today we're going to talk a sort of about that period in between. So there'll come a time when God will create a new heaven and new earth. He created in the past uh, his creation and keep creating uh, now uh, men and women. But what happened uh, in the duration? And today we're going to look a little bit uh, at the process that God takes. If we are purposefully made and we are fearfully and wonderfully made, God has a will for our life. How does he go about it, and how does he shape us into uh, uh, the what what he needs us uh, to be? Isaiah sixty four eight uh, really uh, position us well in relation to our Creator. Uh, Isaiah sixty four eight says those words. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. And actually, let me put that on the screen because it's a verse uh, we should uh, know and uh, uh, really uh, focus on. But now, uh, 64, <coughs> but now, O Lord, thou art our Father, we are the clay, and thou art thou our potter, and we are the work of thy hand. And, <coughs> and this is really a great verse. As I said, it positions us well in regard to uh, uh, our Creator. So we are the clay. Uh, we are the clay, and He is the potter. And uh, uh, I like the last bit of it. And uh, although He's our Father, we are clay, He is the potter, and we are the work of His hand. Today we pay a visit to the potter's house, as uh, recorded in uh, Jeremiah 18. It's a very uh, known ver uh, passage. Uh, <coughs> it's often preached on from different angle but today we're going to pay a visit to jeremiah 18 4 18 1 to 4 let's read those verses uh, first let me put them on the screen and we'll read them together it's only four verses and then we'll see what we uh, god give us uh, for the day so jeremiah 1 to 4 and i put it on the screen uh, the word which came to jeremiah from the lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house <coughs> and uh, I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrote a work on the wheels. So uh, the potter was doing something. And verse 4 which is really the center of what we're looking, uh, looking at and the vessel uh, that he made of clay was mert, uh, meaning spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed, as seemed good to the potter to make it. And verse 4, I'll just read it again, because this is the center of what we're looking at. So there is a, a piece of clay on the wheel, 
uh, the potter hand is on it to make it into a vessel and that uh, endeavor did not succeed uh, then he made it again another vessel however as seemed good to the potter to make it and it's right away you see from that verse that uh, there is a porter uh, involved in that project so the project we're looking at today is uh, at the potter's house is taking a piece of a clay turn it into a vessel uh, uh, the the tool used is the potter and the potter's hand would look at it first and then we have a clay a piece of a clay shaped into a vessel so this is the transformation we're going into and then we see that there is uh, the uh, there are several tools we'll look at to turn that piece of clay into a vessel but the wheel seemed to be like the centerpiece of what happened there uh, first the potter who's that if we advance a little bit one more verse uh, verse 6 uh, uh, so the uh, the story there in jeremiah 18 1 to 4 tells us it's really a picture uh, but verse 6 uh, god start addressing israel and verse 6 tells us that the porah in the story we read is no one but god so verse 6 read this way o house of israel ca cannot i do with you as this porah so he's, he's considering himself the Pora, the Israelite, or the nation of Israel as a piece of clay. And I don't want to read the rest of the story, but you should, uh, because uh, it's not relevant to what I'm preaching today. So again, I want to emphasize that our position in relation to our God is we are all the work of his hand. We're clay in his hand. Although he's our father, he's addressed in, uh, <coughs> in Isaiah 64, 8, he addressed him as father, but he's still saying, we are the clay, you are the porah, and we are the work of your hand. God's hand are the maker of this vessel. And make no mistake, because nowadays it's a big mess up, even in the Christian faith, when uh, people think like a life make a people. Uh, you often say, like, ah, leave your child and life will teach him. Life will teach you nothing. If you want I mean, God does not rely on uh, circumstances and experiences unless you see those experience, experiences and circumstances under God's supervision. Yes, God can use them to teach you, but you can't learn much from looking at the word. If you look at the word as is today, as corrupt, as self-centered, you don't learn much good out of it. Uh, you see, uh, in the word we live without uh, uh, taking a rabbit tra uh, trail, there is... Uh, we emphasize uh, cruelty sometimes. Uh, people are not just toward each other. People who really take advantage of others are looked at as smart. And uh, they are uh, su uh, su succeeding. Uh, we, we don't care how people get what they get. Uh, it's a very self-centered uh, time we're living in. So uh, the first advice is uh, realizing that God is our creator and he's the one shaping our clay into the vessel he wants it to be. And we need to be taught from him, from his word. And we need to, even uh, people who are under our care, whatever they are, whether the children in the church, Sunday school, we need to uh, make that lesson. We don't leave them to the word to teach them. We need to teach them. So the mission, what is the mission the potter is on? The potter is on a constant mission to take a worthless clay and turn it into a useful vessel. And uh, this is many people get challenged by the idea that uh, God cannot work on me uh, because I'm not worthy. Uh, God never used anyone who's worthy. Actually, he picks up the unworthy and make them worthy. No one is excluded from this spirit. If my first message for you today, nobody is excluded from that transformation that God is calling you to. The Pora, as I said, it take a, I'll talk a, a little bit more about it in, the, in point two, the, uh, the clay. Uh, but he's, he's interested in a worthless piece of clay, take it into turn to something beautiful. Uh, <coughs> and 1 Corinthians one twenty eight uh, tell us that, and he said, based things of the word, and things which are despised has God chosen. God did not pick up the uh, elite uh, to do, although he sometimes did, but generally. And things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring the, to not things that are. And then he tell us why. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him 
uh, uh, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus. And basically, the symbol uh, wording of this, uh, that God is in the business of taking the worthless, uh, the unusable, to use them, uh, the unclean, to clean them, uh, the unsaved, to save them, the uh, unrepentant, to convict their heart, and uh, cause repentance in their heart and bring them to him. Uh, it's, it's all upon you. It doesn't matter where you are and who you are. It's your desire to be with him, to live with him, to be cleansed by his power and to be brought to the potter's house where you can be shaped into what God wants you uh, make you. You see, when Jesus wants to furnish his house, he doesn't go to the best uh, store in town to buy, <coughs> to buy his furniture. He goes to the op shop to the reject and to pick it up. That's why in the lineage of Christ, you see people like the prostitute Rahab and the Moab, uh, Moabite, uh, <coughs> Moabite Ruth, who was an idol worshiper before coming to the Lord. That's why among his disciples, you see someone like Paul who was a murderer and prosecutor of the church. So do not feel like a failure, <laughs> worthless. Uh, don't give up on life. Some people like uh, their self-worth is very little in their eyes. This is from Satan. It's not from God. You're wonderfully created. God has an image of you in his mind. He want to create you. When God look at you, he see and me. He, in, in our initial state, he see a worthless piece of clay, but he doesn't see us that way. He straight away imagine a beautiful vessel he want to shape you into. And it's only up to you to cooperate with him and work with him. To turn into the image coming to him repenting and accepting him and i'll talk a little bit about that you are what jesus is looking for if you feel like worthless neglected that you're not uh, like nobody is interested like if you disappear from the face of the earth nobody would notice or really care jesus key god key and god doesn't see you as worthless you he saw you worthy for jesus christ to die for you on the cross you are that precious in his eyes and he want to shape you into a vessel that is uh, uh, a speaker glory of his name. First Corinthians 6, 9, 11. I hope you read those verses at home. Uh, but basically uh, what he's saying there, he's given us a list of people who will not make it uh, to the kingdom. He will not make it to the kingdom. And start using very uh, specific sins. I don't want to go into them, but among them he said fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, uh, uh, thieves, uh, liars, covetous people, drunkard, uh, he shall, shall not inherit the verse of God. And he give us a lot, of, a long list of awful sin. He said, like, people who commit these things will not make it uh, to the kingdom of God. But look what he says in verse 11. So 1 Corinthians uh, 6 and 11. And then he uh, he's talking to that, uh, about who doesn't make it to the kingdom of God. But then he turned to address the Christian. And he said those words, but such were some of you. You Christian, my brethren, such were some of you. Some of you were fornicators, idolaters, worshippers of idols, covetous, liars, drunkard. Such ways of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our Lord. And this is, it should give hope to every one of us. No matter who I am, there is hope to be justified find free of meaning find innocent justified is found declared innocent in god's eyes uh, to be washed and to be sanctified even be a saint in god's eyes because of the blood of jesus these people who were fornicators they submitted to the potter's hand to do his work on their life when god called them they responded when jesus when god's word was preached they accepted it when jesus called on them they came to him and that's why such way such, uh, so you should always remember that verse. Such I remember like uh, e even in First Corinthians six nine. Such were some of you. Paul himself was one of them. He was following the church from one place to the other, capturing who he can capture, throwing in a prison, and and really bringing bringing uh, trouble into people's life, killing, organizing. Although like we don't know he he personally in his hand killed anyone, but he was agreeing with people being captured, killed, and executed. So uh, the potter God is interested in working, and I believe I, I love the picture of a potter because if you've ever seen a potter working, it's it's a worthless piece of clay. But then he put his hands around it. His eyes is on it. 
So it's really a very careful process. Nobody really uh, can put a piece of clay on the wheel and turn the electricity or t turn some machine and, and, and turns it. The hands needs to be there all the time. The eyes need to be there all the time. And it's a beautiful picture. And let me tell you something, God, the greatest potter ever existed, is interested in you. No matter how worthless you are, a clay is thrown somewhere. He will dig you up. He will clean you. He will bring you to his glory. And he want to make, make you his child and do wonders in your life. This was the porter. Then that is the clay. And uh, the, the clay here, you need to understand there is two processes in the Christian life. Like uh, Christian life is pretty complicated if you want to take it. But there is two processes in the Christian life. First process called salvation. This is when you come to Jesus and repent of your sin and you become God's, God's child. This is basically turn you from a worthless piece of clay and me. I, I, I went through that process when I was 20 years old. It turned, it, God turned me from a useless piece of clay to a use, useful but still uh, lump of clay. So this is this is first phase. This is salvation. Salvation uh, is just bring you from the word to the kingdom of God. Bring you from being uh, sort of uh, driven away because of your sin uh, 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 from the face of God and the family of God. And when you're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, submitting, submitting yourself, repenting of your sin and coming to him in repentance, asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, to become a child of God. But it's still a lump of clay, but it's now useful. And this is how, how uh, he used the image of a clay. The clay, by the way, uh, the, the potter doesn't go to a place and find a piece of a clay, bring it home and make, make um, straight away start making a vessel. It doesn't work this way. Actually, they, they do get a specific piece of clay, it, uh, but it's useless as it is. It is useless as, as we were before we come to God, as I was before I come to God. Then they take the place and it's a bit muddy. They dig it up and they bring it. And guess what? Although it's muddy, and it's a bit soft, they say, no, we need to dry it first. We need to empty it from whatever it has. All the moisture in it, any shape in it. And that's why you bring those clay and they leave it for weeks in a big pile until really it dries and turns into hard stone. Then they'll take them after they dry it. They want to lose what's there, put them in a big pot with water and they soak it for days and days. They soak it for days and days. And after that uh, process of soaking, bringing a fresh, new, clean water on it, and sometimes they use uh, salty water from the sea, uh, they start mixing it. And this is to break it down into like a milky substance. And uh, they call that, uh, it's a slimy <coughs> mud, uh, uh, sort of mud, and they call that the slip. And then after, it start the process of turning it into a... Uh, a, a useful clay, a useful clay. They pour that mixture into another pot, try to get the water out of it, but in the process, all the rocks or the dirt or the unwanted object, all the debris are left behind, are left behind. And now you have a milky substance, but it's clean. And this is, they put it, uh, that process take about six months uh, in that clean uh, mixture. In these six months, the water will start drying up and then uh, they start the wood drying up and the substance become glossy. It become a little bit elastic. Uh, and this is the process of taking a piece, a worthless piece of clay and turn it only, only into a good piece of a clay, a useful piece of clay. Uh, this is pretty much uh, what happened during salvation. Uh, not in the same manner and the time, in time, but really uh, the process is the same. There is a digging to take place, digging, uh, basically, it's like a conviction, it's, it's, it's like a digging, taking it from one place to another, and uh, they need to be soaked in, in, in water, and uh, there is a living things behind, rocks and debris behind, and really, the process of salvation is very, uh, exactly the same, it's really, at first there need to be some digging, like the Holy Spirit will, the, the Bible used the word the prick in your heart, picking in your heart. It's really a uh, conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to work on your heart. 
to tell you who you are that uh, and then you need to be socked in god's uh, god's word you need to uh, hear god's word and uh, respond to it positively and the last piece of the you need to leave things behind and actually the first story of salvation and you not salvation especially the ministry of the paul uh Pira in uh, acts 2 uh, you know, in Acts 2, the day of the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came on the disciple. Peter came out and started preaching, and people were listening. The Jew, you know, the Jew didn't like the Christian at all. Uh, that, that are the one responsible for crucifying Jesus. But when they heard Peter, we see an amazing reaction happening in uh, Acts 2, 37. And when they heard this, so first the word was showered at them. They, they, Peter gave a lengthy message about their history and how they crucified Jesus and how they were wrong at it. But then you see how the work of the Holy Spirit and they were pricked in their heart. They start having conviction in their heart. They were, yeah, we're wrong. We did really something terrible killing this man, Jesus. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostle men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do is an agreement that I'm wrong and I'm willing to change. So you see the process, hearing the word, being pricked by the Holy Spirit, conviction of the Holy Spirit, and willingness to change. And, and this is the transformation. Then Peter responded actually to their request by saying, repent and be baptized. Uh, and <coughs> repent and be baptized. I want to emphasize the word repent because as you know, repent is leaving what's behind, moving forward. Uh, turning from your way to God and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus, I notice the every one of you, now, there isn't a pe person in the world who doesn't need to repent. Every single person, among those people listening to, uh, to Peter, that, that they were priests, they were uh, really good men, good women, but they all need to repent and come to Jesus Christ, you and me included, and uh, uh, be baptized in the name of the Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you see, uh, the story is the same, but the timing is not the same. In the, in the process of the clay, the process they reckon it takes about like six to nine months of preparing the bad clay or the worthless clay into a useful clay. But the day of salvation is instantaneous. You don't hear that. And actually, even the way I break it, the sh like being soaked by God's word, uh, conviction of the Holy Spirit, and it's changing. Uh, they are not one to three really. They happen all together. Like when you hear God's word, uh, when you hear God's word, like sucked by hard word, you start taking it into your heart and mind. The Holy Spirit starts convicting your heart and you're responding by saying, what should I do to get saved? And the answer is always repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you don't need months to get saved. You can uh, get saved on the same day, on the same moment. You can get saved now if you admit you're a sinner and come to Jesus Christ and tell him, Lord, save me. Your death on the cross, I deserve it. I am the sinner. I am the one who's guilty, but I want to thank you for what you've done on the cross for me. Be my savior and my redeemer. And the rest of the story is not like poetry on what I'm, what I'm teaching. Verse 41 of that same story. After they did that, I said, then they that... So remember how we told them, repent. Maybe some people liked it. Some people didn't like it, the idea. But then 41 tell us, and then they that gladly received his word, the one who agreed with him, that repent, were baptized. At the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So about three, we don't know how many were listening, but 3,000 received the word gladly. Today, I don't know how many people, surely we don't have 3,000 people, but I hope you're one of those who will receive that call to come to Jesus Christ, to admit you're a sinner and surrender your life to him. You receive it gladly. And this, you make a decision in your heart, God, I want to repent. I need your help to leave, to leave things behind, my past, my debris, uh, the unwanted things in my life. I want to be, become a good clay in your hand. Uh, please shape me. Please make me. I want to be a useful. I want to be your child. I want to be a good clay in your hand so you can uh, shape me. You created me for a purpose, and I want to submit to that purpose you created me for. So first, uh, we see the porter and his intention, and then we see the clay. And how it changed under the care of the poor, by the way, not by itself. It turned from a worthless piece of clay into a useful piece of clay. But at the end, we know that the poor are using his hand and a wheel to make the vessel.
Because at the end, you remember, the project was taking a worthless piece of a client and turning it into a vessel. Uh, you are now a worthy client. You're saved. You're God's child. And many people think life uh, finished there. Actually, the, the good works start there. Once you're uh, God's child, uh, God uh, repented, you left your, uh, you left your past behind, uh, the rocks, the debris, the corrupted stuff in your life are going away. You are now a clean, po uh, a clean, a clean and useful piece of clay, and God want to work on you. Uh, you have to undergo that transformation process. The potter's work will continue, and I I'll suggest it will continue for the rest of your life. Unlike the clay, we are human, though. We can say no. We can resist the hand of the potter. We can decide to get off the will. We can decide to loathe the will. We can decide to even complain against the hand uh, that loves us, created us, and tries to shape us. And that's why that process of God turning us into um, a, a vessel uh, is really can, can, can hit some uh, uh, obstacle in a new way. Uh, the process starts this way, the uh, only day when the porter decide to make that clay into a, uh, a vessel. He take a lump, <coughs> he thinks it's sufficient. He put it on a table and get the bed and start beating it over and over. The process there is to get all the air bubbles out because air bubbles are dangerous. You know, in, in, a port, uh, in, in, a, in a vessel made of uh, clay, an air bubble create a soft spot. It looks good. But sometimes you click on it and it's broken. You make a hole in the vessel. So the first job is to beat it over and over. And uh, none of us like, like to be beaten. But it's necessary. To, so we can take our own form, our own size. Many people look way bigger than they are because of like a lot of bubble. Uh, our pride. Our, um, us thinking were very important. Us thinking, oh, God is so lucky to have me. Uh, all of us have those thoughts. Uh, I'm educated. I'm rich. I'm, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, the whole purpose is to make you air free. We don't like that process. But it's not the worst. The worst is when he put you on the wheel. He put you on the wheel and starts spinning. And it spin. And it spin. Faster and faster and faster. And as the speed peaks, it's really dangerous. You start feeling, I am nothing. I'm losing my weight. I'm losing my weight. I have no weight anymore. I'm totally surrounded to that spinning. Uh, totally, I'm nothing. You lose your will. You can't shape yourself. It's only the hand of the porter now in charge. His hand is all that matters. Nothing else matters. How heavy you are, how clean you are, how prepared you are, how uh, uh, air bubble free you are, doesn't matter. The, the hand of the porter is all that matters and working on you. And sometimes, unfortunately, we complain. We don't want it. We don't want it. Isaiah 45, and I hope you and me, my brother, my sister, I hope none, none of us will be in that, in, that, in that shape, resisting God's work on us. Isaiah 45, nice, says those words, Woe unto him that striveth, fight with his maker. Let the uh, uh, pochet strive with the pochet of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned, what makest thou? The clay doesn't ask. The porter, what are you making? When God's hand is on you to shape you, don't strive. Don't fight. Otherwise, we, we see something, a result, undesired result, like the one we see in verse 4, if I pick it up again. In verse 4 we see, And the vessel that he made of clay was wasted, was spoiled, was marred in the hand of the porter. We don't want that. We don't know why. He tells us that the vessel he was making was spoiled. It didn't succeed. God's work on you didn't succeed. It didn't go ahead. We don't know why. It could be the bubbles. You didn't want to let go. You wanted to be, have the big head, the pride, the position that God cannot use in the ministry. As long as I is there, God cannot use you. 
So it's, uh, or maybe as the vessels start making, some cracks start appearing. And God didn't like that because the cracks are dangerous. Everything God put in, they leak, they go to waste. God is not a bad investor. He doesn't invest in a vessel that's going to leak everything out and lose it. So the crack are not good, air bubble are not good. Uh, <clears throat> and that's why God sometimes go hard on us. He put his hand around the vessel and squeeze it and squeeze it. And he put his finger sometime trying to repair and mend that crack in us and we don't like it. Uh, this is discipline. Let me tell you something. Uh, it's not a lesson about discipline, but God does discipline his children because he's a good God. He's a good father. Uh, Hebrew 12, he said, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. The chastening of the Lord or <coughs> the discipline <coughs> is, not, uh, uh, is not a punishment. God does not punish his children. Punishment imply causing hurt. Uh, punishment is done because of revenge. God is not that type of a God. He's a father. So he said, Nor faint when thou rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth. He chastened, and he scourge every son who receive. If he loves you, he will discipline you. Um, some, some we don't know. Like I said, that the, the Bible, and I don't like to add to it, doesn't say the reason. But how, however, it says the vessel was spoiled, was marked, spoiled. It didn't succeed. Some preacher I was listening to years, years back, uh, first time I heard a message from uh, that, that passage, he suggested something, he said some Christian, and I, I met in life, I don't think this is implied here, but it's a good application, uh, some people uh, become a very rough vessel that God doesn't like. And he, he said, like on that day, he said, like I look, people who use God's word and overuse it for their own purposes. I'm not sure if you come across those people who are always quoting verses to judge others, criticizing everybody, and uh, everybody is not godly, everybody is not doing well. Uh, they take God's word as a law and start applying it. And the word of life is meant to bring life. Yes, it does. It is there for correction. It is there to point out to us our mistake. But let me tell you, it's, uh, I like what the Bible says, that God's word is like a mirror. You don't bring the people and put them in here. You bring yourself and, and look at the mirror. So if, if, if you see yourself on God's word, you see something wrong, fix it. If you see at the command, obey it. But don't take it and start hammering people, judging all people around you, start acting holier than thou. This is really a very uh, harsh vessel. It's rough. Uh, and uh, there's no oil in it. It needs to be smooth. It needs to be nice. It new began when somebody hold that vessel. It needs. It is not uh, sort of uh, take the skin out of hand. Some people is like that, where their tongue is like always l running left and right, taking the skin of people. They want to skin everybody using God's word. This is not a good vessel for God. If you're that type of person, and I, 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 I wish none of us is. Please jump on the wheel yourself. You still need few spins. As some others, on the other hand. They have too much oil. You see those people, it's like, ah, oh, God told me to do this and that. And uh, one day God told them to go to uh, uh, this land and uh, God told me to marry that person and God m told me to do that job. And sometimes whatever God told them is really contrary to the Bible. This can't be God telling you. You're telling yourself. And those people are sort of... So the other one is a very dry vessel, harsh, not smooth, uh, coarse surface on it. The other one is very uh, sort of uh, a fluid uh, personality. One day here, one day there. God told me, God told me, the auto gonna, but really they are doing their own will in the name of God. They stand for nothing. Uh, you don't know what they believe. They don't know what, uh, what is their aim in life. One day, every day, it's a wobbly vessel. So basically, you don't like it, yeah? You don't like a vessel at home. Every time you hold it, you have to go... Uh, put a cream on your hand because it's so coarse. God doesn't like those vessels. He want to remake them. And you don't like a wobbly vessel as well. As you hold it, uh, it starts uh, like shifting left and right. And if let's say it's a, a a vessel like to drink water from, you can't even get anything out of it because every day has a different shape. Uh, too much oil. God told me, God told me, but there is no roots in God's word to whatever they're saying. Basically, they're quoting God's name in vain. 
Uh, but uh, there is no doubt that one of the biggest problems that caused that vessel to fail is sin in our life. God uh, will not use a dirty vessel. He will keep cleaning it, he keeps spinning it until it gets all its debris out. It, it get, uh, Second Timothy uh, make a call to us, if you're really a child of God and you want to serve God, uh, your, number one, your number one call is to keep yourself clean with God's help. All, we're all human. We all have our failure. But with God's help should be your daily prayer. God give me. And I love that passage, 2 Timothy 2.20. 2 Timothy, let me bring it on the screen. Actually, it's good to read together. 2 Timothy 2.20. 2.20. And he, he said, uh, <coughs> uh, But in a great... Uh, let me bring it on the screen. But in a great house, there are not only, uh, Paul talking to him as he said those words, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. But then look at that condition, if he said, and this is for you and me. If a man therefore purge, or a woman, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So we need to be sanctified, meaning set apart for him. You need to set your life apart for him. So when God put you on the wheel, you say, yes, God, put me on the wheel. Purify me. Clean me. I want to be a vessel to you. I want to be a good vessel ready for every good work. Uh, look, uh, I, I, I'm sure that the picture is clear now in verse 4. He tried to make a vessel. It failed. There is a good news, and there is some bad news. So let me put verse 4 on the screen again, and I'll share with you the good news, the bad news, and then we'll, we'll, we're done. Verse 4, And the vessel that he made of a clay was marred, marred in the hand of the porter. So there were failures. We don't tell us the reason, we just shared some. Uh, being full of air, as I said, uh, we have cracks, uh, we're legalistic, uh, we're very washy-washy. Uh, no, not rooted in God's word, God told me, God told me, uh, being, uh, having a sinful life, all, all those can lead to an unworthy vessel. Uh, uh, but, uh, but look, the, the good news. And that, I find the pleasure in that. Uh, I find, uh, I'm happy for you, I'm happy for me. So he made it again, another vessel. What a beautiful picture. He didn't say he take, took that lamb and threw it away in rubbish. He made it again. And God, um, you could be a child of God, or for whatever reason you had fa your failures. I had my failures. Nobody is uh, didn't have failures in the life. But we rejoice. Many of us who are standing in the faith today, not because we're good, because we are clay in the hand of a faithful and loving potter. He made it again. Another vessel. This is the good news. So no matter how, how much... God's hand failed in reshaping you, there is another chance. He doesn't want to throw you. I don't think he will do that forever, but I'm not God. Uh, that we, have, we have in history people who like say, no, 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 resist, and God put them aside. Uh, take them to him. Uh, you'll be always his child, but God can, can pull a plug on you. Uh, but uh, in that instance, he tells us that he made it again, and we should rejoice and thank God for that. He, he made it. And God, my, my brother, my sister, if, if you have one of those, God want to make you again today. By his grace and his will, all you need to do is submit to his will. But uh, this is the good news. The bad news is, uh, continue with me reading, and, uh, and the vessel that he made was murdered in the hand of the potter, so he made it again, another vessel, but look what it is. As seemed good to the potter to make it. So God, although he give you second and third and tenth a, chai, uh, a chance of remaking you into a vessel, the goal will never change. You will be made a vessel as seemed good to him. So you better submit to that. If you think like uh, playing game with God and being rebellious and saying no, that you're going to twist God's hand or you're going to change his opinion or going to reshape yourself into what you want, you will fail. God will make you the vessel he seemed as seemed good to the potter to make it because he's the creator. He knows what's best for you and me. And we better submit to his hand to take us where he want to take us, to shape us to what he wants us to shape us, but because this is best for us. And we need to relax on that. 
We need to be happy and rejoicing in that. So my friend, if you don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, uh, God sees in you a great vessel. He want to take you and turn you into a useful clay, put you on your will, but you need to first submit to him saying, God, yes, I want to work with you. I want to be a useful thing in your hand to make you a vessel worthy, sanctified by your blood, sanctified and justified by your death on the cross and washed by your word. So take God's word, receive it in your heart, repent. You remember when the Holy Spirit convicts your heart, respond by repenting and coming to God. God, and my friend, if you're a believer who at time past you surrounded your life to to God and, you, uh, and you're one of his children, be rest assured that God work in you. Even that you have your fellows is not done. Philippians 1.6 saying those words, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in, in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't come yet. God is still working on you and he wants you to come to him in repentance so he can shape you into the vessel he wants you to be. And all you have to do is just, yes, God. Uh, if, uh, the, wise, the wise of us, uh, he doesn't wait for God to put him on the I will look for the wheel and jump on it. Because you're not, not going to rest. If you're really, truly a child of God, you're not going to rest. You're not going to be happy. You will never have peace in your heart until God make you into the vessel that he wants you to be. And what a beautiful picture. What a beautiful picture that God, even after failures and failures, is still interested in us. He still want to make us. He still have a purpose for our life. He's not only our creator. He's also our shaper day by day into the image of Christ. God loves us that much. He wants us to be like his son, Jesus Christ. And what, what a beautiful picture. What a beautiful desire God has for us. So can I call on you today to come and repent to him and tell him, God, shape me, make me. I want to be what you want me to be. There is a beautiful song I'll finish with. It says those words. Empty and broken, I came back to him, a vessel unworthy, so scarred from sin, but he did not despair, he started over again, and I bless the day he didn't throw the clay away, he will never do, he will never do, he loves you, he want to shape you, empty and broken, I came back to him, a vessel unworthy, so scarred from sin, but he did not despair, he started and he's starting today in you over again. And may that be the day where you could say about, and I bless the day he didn't throw the clay away. Let's rejoice in the faithfulness and the handmaking of our God, our greatest porter. We all start by recognizing we are a worthless piece of clay. The blood of Jesus Christ will turn us into a useful piece of clay and us submitting to the hand of God. Whether it's a will, whether it's a furnace, it's only burning the unwanted things. It's only getting rid of the unwanted thing. It's only calling us to repentance. And not only we should not love it, we should thank God for it. I pray that today's message will be a blessing to you. And I hope to see you again next week in another message from God's Word. God bless you all.